Murder is an ugly business. When society's fundamental law, thou shalt not kill, has been breached, it takes no time for the wheels of justice to be set into motion. Along with the homicide captain and the inspector arrives a rolling laboratory, which brings modern techniques and trained technicians for on-the-spot investigation. They take a preliminary view of the murder victim, a young girl, and go to work. Inside is a crime detection workshop, which would have amazed and delighted Sherlock Holmes. The Mobile Laboratory is equipped with instruments and tools capable of dealing with anything from burglary to homicide. Ready to the hand of the police scientists are the means and knowledge which formerly only academic laboratories could boast. Today, both are whisked into the field and put to immediate use at the scene of the crime itself where clues can be uncovered, analyzed, and evaluated without delay. A miniature laboratory in itself is the homicide kit, fully equipped for field chemistry and fingerprint work. today pits himself against a massive organization whose scope ranges far beyond the patrolman on the beat and the sergeant at the desk. The police laboratory comes into its own when called upon to deal with evidence gathered at the scene of the crime. What their colleagues have gathered in the field, specialists will build upon in the laboratory. The fingerprint from the murder car will be compared with those on the victim's handbag. Many a secret lies buried in the clutter of a woman's purse. In this one, a highball stick provides an obvious lead to be checked. Experts are assigned to study the various clues. A civilian scientist who specializes in laboratory analysis of criminal evidence is put to work. Meanwhile, the cast of a footprint found near the murder scene is prepared for measurement and study, and the attendant earth is analyzed. A precise, painstaking analysis of the material gathered from the murder car begins. Anything may be a clue. And for the police scientist, this thimble full of miscellaneous dust and these stray hairs are prizes worthy of the closest study. A murder case may literally hang by a hair, and hair splitting is routine in the police laboratory. Under the microscope, a single strand may tell police a good deal about the man they're looking for. How old he is, his race, complexion, whether or not his hair was lately cut, a tiny signpost for technicians able to read what it says. At the same time, other gears in the police machinery are meshing. Fingerprints are checked at the Bureau of Criminal Identification. And on the lead provided by the highball stick, Tony's bar becomes a target of the investigation. Bartenders often know a good deal about the people they serve drinks to, and the police can use that knowledge. Does the bartender recognize this picture of her? Yes, he knows her. She came in here often. Was here last night, in fact. There was a guy with her as usual. That guy? Never saw him before. How about this one? No, oh, never saw him before either. Wait a minute now, that one looks more like it. He was dressed differently, but he looks like the one all right. So the search concentrates on the unidentified boyfriend. The rogues gallery may tell something if he has a record. When all leads have been exhausted, one ace remains, the laboratory report. What have the police scientists read in the dust of the murder car? The report says particles of buried granite frequently used in tombstones. So the killer left behind a few grains of tombstone dust. The place to look then is where tombstones are made and New York has hundreds of them. 
no glamorous dime novel sleuthing here just ordinary foot slogging from place to place and on the fiftieth try you run into a tombstone dealer who recognizes the elusive face in the photograph and he shows you where you can see the face for yourself he takes you part way there may be trouble where most detective stories end with the capture of the culprit actually the job is far from over with the arrest made the police have to make it stick the bartender is the last known witness to have seen the girl in the killer's company can the barkeep identify that man now can he pick him out from the others in the lineup and thus add an essential link to the chain the police are forging without identification the whole case may collapse scene of the crime. It is science that must supply evidence where other methods fail. And at last, the district attorney is able to take over, using the evidence gathered by police science and detection as ammunition in the unceasing battle for justice. It is legal evidence that gives the state power to act in its own defense against those who raise their hands against society. It is evidence which supports the indictment by which the law says, I do accuse.